Um, talking about onboarding, why it's important. The world of work is changing. I mean, you as, uh, as recruitment professionals uh, are probably aware of that. And the question is, are you ready for the new generation coming into the workforce? Because they have some characteristics that are rather different than uh, what it used to be. So let me tap into the first one. And please are consumers, so they are constantly on our mobile phone. So they consume information and content uh, about your company as they consume news and, and sports and everything. Um, the way companies are structured and how people collaborate are a bit different. Um, they work in projects, squads, or ports, or uh, other diagonal forms of, uh, of co cooperation uh, um, <coughs> uh, teams. They want an experience, so we've been talking about that as well with, uh, with uh, Simon, that they want to be engaged uh, and they want to have an immersive experience um, throughout the complete journey, starting when they are looking for a job until they go and find something else and leave, to, uh, leave your company. Um, no more management layer, so who then is responsible for onboarding? I'll dive into that a bit later because it's interesting to know what you think who is responsible for onboarding. Um, they change their jobs more often. So um, when before someone would have an employment of maybe five, seven years, uh, it's now lowering to two to three years. So it's becoming more and more important to become faster productive uh, as a new hire because if it takes six months to become productive and you leave after two years you've only been using a new hire for the full hundred percent for one and a half years which is a waste of uh, talent and of course you can work at any location you can uh, work in a coffee shop uh, not the ones in Amsterdam but the regular ones <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you can work at home, so that means that technology should support that. What we at Apical believe is that companies that uh, engage uh, their employees from the start uh, will be successful, and that you, if you fail to catch up with, um, with that trend, you will lose your reputation uh, and your efficiency and talent and that the future belongs to employee-centric organizations. So what is onboarding? This is the official definition, so the mechanism through which new employees acquire the necessary knowledge, skills, and behaviors to become effective organizational members and insiders. It's a whole mouthful, it's rather technical. Um, in our opinion, it's bridging the gap between what you guys do, talent acquisition and talent management, because from the moment someone signs an offer to when he starts entering the regular academy, the regular training and education within your company, uh, there's usually like a three to six months gap, uh, which is the period in which your new hires really need it the most. They need the most information and uh, training to become to that 100% productivity. So there's a really big uh, black hole there. Some statistics I mentioned earlier on why it is important to work on your onboarding. Um, well, you obviously didn't decide to leave after that, that bad experience, but 20% of employees decide to leave the company within the first 45 days. So really, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression in that early stages. The average cost of an employee that leaves the company uh, unwanted could amount up to 45% uh, of the annual salary. I'm just talking about recruitment costs, uh, costs of training, um, replacing uh, the new hire, etc., uh, etc. Et There's a whole list of, of costs that you make and it can amount up to this uh, percentage. And employees who went through an effective onboarding program will be more inclined to stay. Uh, there's a 50% uh, 
increasing that likeliness if they had an effective awarding. And 77% of employees use their experience in the first six months to decide if they want to commit themselves to the job for the long term. So there's really a lot to gain in here. So why do employees leave? The most common uh, aspects are not down on personal level, but it's really about the employer. Mismatching expectations. So what you can do with recruitment marketing is picture a really, really great image of your company, like a golden door with, uh, with fountains of chocolate and, and everything. And once you enter that door, you fall into a really, really big, <laughs> uh, uh, really big hole, and there's nothing there for you. So then there's the mismatch in expectations. Um, the mismatch with the company culture. So painting a really uh, uh, image of yourself that's not really what it's like, not being authentic and true to what you are really are as a company and someone coming in and, and thinking uh, that you're an open, transparent company, but you're not, then someone will decide to leave. Then, of course, uh, failing to get on along with colleagues or your manager. Most of the time, you've only spoken to your hiring manager once in an interview and you don't really have the chance uh, to, to get to know more thoroughly. So it's really important to engage the manager more regularly in the whole pre-boarding process so they get to know each other and know what kind of person it is. And lack of opportunity. So you also need to be frank and inform people about what you have to offer down the line. So these are, are some of the consequences. I was already uh, talking about uh, the financial uh, consequences, but of course there are some more consequences. Uh, people that leave with a bad feeling will tell it to their friends, so it could really hurt your employer brand. Um, morale of the team, if someone leaves after a few months uh, and there's no replacement because you didn't have really good forecast planning, um, that really has an effect because everyone then needs to speed up their, uh, their game. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of consequences of turnover. What can we do about this? A few steps to success. As already mentioned, engage them from the start when they've signed their contract because you've been engaging them throughout the whole candidate journey. Why not continue that afterwards? Make relevant content. So if you have content, make sure it really reflects the same content that you've been using during the candidate journey because if it's different, uh, and not relevant, then people will not use it. Make a special occasion of the first day. Be crystal clear about the objectives of the role. Ask for feedback all the time, because that can really help you improve not just your onboarding, but also your recruitment process. Embrace new technology because, as I mentioned before, uh, employees are consumers, so they're used to new technology and they expect that you use it as well. And this is a, a bit of an open door, as we call it. Make sure your colleagues fall in love with your company through great onboarding. 